Buongiorno and welcome back uh, to my virtual tour of Sicily where I'm hopping uh, around the island and uh, telling a little bit about the history only very very much uh, scratching the surface of course but more importantly picking on some of the typical dishes from each area and cooking them together. Today I will be moving to the eastern side of the island up until now I've been uh, focusing on the western side and I'll be going into the Catania area. Catania is also where I was born. I'll be cooking a, a schiacciata catanese which is like a pie with uh, savory fillings inside. There are different versions but I'll be doing a meat eater version today and uh, we will We'll uh, crack on by starting with uh, the mix for the pie. The schiacciata catanese is made of uh, two types of uh, flour. One is semolina and one is uh, plain flour. The 80% is uh, semolina, so here I've got uh, 400 grams of uh, semolina flour and I'm now adding uh, another 100 grams of uh, normal plain flour so that uh, it's that 80-20 split. Wow, that's pretty close. <laughs> And then I will also be adding a good pinch of salt. Next is water and uh, in this particular recipe 65% needs to be water so I've got 325 milliliters of water and I will be adding some yeast to it and I'm not going to be putting the whole sachet only approximately half which is about four grams. Mix with a spoon and uh, then uh, we will add it to our flour. and start working it uh, initially with a spoon until uh, the flour absorbed most of the water. And once it reaches the point where it becomes difficult, that's when uh, you can uh, get your hands dirty. Once your dough is uh, completely absorbed all of the bits of flour, you can remove it from uh, the bowl and uh, put it on your worktop and continue mixing it uh, and kneading it with your hands. And this should not be requiring very long as the semolina flour is uh, much easier to work with so literally just a minute or so and uh, you should be pretty much done. Wonderful, job done. I'm going to be putting it back in my bowl there and we're done for now and uh, this will now need to rest for a good six hours. So I will be covering it up with a damp cloth and I'll be placing mine inside uh, the airing cupboard as it is uh, a nice warm area but room temperature as long as your house is not freezing cold will also be fine. So I'm now off for a long run, it's a lovely beautiful day and uh, I fancy really going for a jog and I'll be doing some jobs in the garden as Julie keep giving me all these jobs to do but when I come back this afternoon uh, I'll tell you a little bit about Catania being such a special place because I was born there. <laughs> no, that's not why it's a special place. I'll tell you to be about Catania and a little bit of the history and then Etna, but also we can continue with the recipe. Ciao, ciao, see you this afternoon, bye. Hi there, I'm back and the door is nearly ready. It's been almost six hours and more importantly, I've been released from garden duties. So I'm gonna quickly show you the ingredients as I got them all ready and then we can crack on with putting together this schiacciata. And here we go, we've got uh, the door is under the blanket and um, then we have uh, some spinach, sausages, uh, a little fennel I will be using Emmental cheese, also pecorino cheese I've grated. There are um, 300 grams of potato which I've sliced very, very thinly. They are in water so that they do not turn black. Also, we've got there uh, a one uh, clove of garlic, again, uh, very, very finely chopped, and uh, a very, very finely chopped red onion, medium size. Some um, cherry tomatoes, again, uh, thinly sliced, and also I've halved some uh, black olives and uh, some mushrooms which I also have. So I'll uh, put it together and I'll run through, but of course the description will give you the quantities that you need. Good thing about the schiacciata is that uh, beside uh, the cooking in the oven, the only cooking required is gonna be the spinach and the mushrooms. So there is a very minimum requirement and I'll do that now by starting by pouring a little olive oil in a pan. And once the oil is nice and warm, I'm going to add my mushrooms first. I'll mix them together initially so that uh, all of the oil goes into some of the mushrooms and I'll place the lid on and I'll let it uh, cook for a good two to three minutes uh, before I do anything else. After a few minutes the mushrooms are partly cooked especially as I put the lid on and they cook considerably faster 
and I'm gonna be adding my sliced garlic I didn't add it earlier because I didn't want to burn it mix it and also add the spinach at the same time and put the lid back on for a few more minutes as I'm using some sausages uh, and these are not uh, seasoned with anything just uh, straight pork sausages I'm removing the skin so that I can uh, season them with some fennel and uh, they already got salt so I'm not going to be putting any salt but if you were using uh, sausages which have got already seasoning by all means you can just chop without removing the skin because uh, the purpose is for me to treat them with some uh, some herbs so once they're all de skinned I'll be putting them in a bowl and I'm adding some fennel. I add fennel because uh, it's a very, very typical Sicilian herb and it goes incredibly well with sausages and is very commonly used throughout Sicily. And my best suggestion for this is to use your hand as you'll be able to literally squish the sausages uh, and make sure that the fennel goes inside the meat. And I'm gonna start putting everything together and I'll start very much with the sausages. So in a larger bowl I put them in also showed you earlier some uh, um, onions which uh, I had sliced, this is a red onion and if you look they are incredibly thinly sliced, very very important that they are cut very very small. The same applies to the tomatoes, again I have uh, used some cherry tomatoes and I have uh, cut them very very thinly and also I have halved uh, some um, black olives, so they all go in. And using my hands I'll be mixing everything together which is much easier than using any other tools really so that uh, you can ensure that uh, you do not damage the tomatoes as they are most probably quite thin but also everything is mixed throughout. I'm going to add also a little pepper and I've grated some um, pecorino, this is uh, 60 grams of pecorino and I'll mix everything together. I'm not going to add any salt at this point because uh, the pecorino is quite salty and if I add uh, more salt, bearing in mind that I put quite a bit of salt also in my pie, it will be too salty. So I think uh, I'm going to be stopping with the pecorino. And lastly, I will be adding a little olive oil and one final mix. And my vegetables are also cooked. Um, as you will see, the spinach has shrunk considerably. I'm going to add a tiny little amount of salt and also some pepper. And I'll mix them together and let them cool down for a little bit. And now it's time to have a look at the door. Look, it's beautiful, has uh, grown by quite a bit and uh, it uh, looks uh, nice and soft and uh, ready to be mixed now. So I will remove it from the bowl and I'll put it on my worktop. And I'm just going to give it one final and gentle massage just to get it in shape really. Go along with your knife and cut it uh, in half, but um, one half slightly bigger than the other so that that can be the base and that can be the top. I've placed some baking paper on a baking tin and I'm going to be putting a tiny little amount of olive oil down first and uh, using a brush I'm going to be spreading throughout the surface of uh, the paper. Also I've made the paper purposely slightly bigger so that uh, it goes up on the edges as well but with a brush ensure that uh, you brush the edges as well. And very simply place your dough inside it and start spreading it using your fingers and you will see that it's nice and elastic and you will have no problems whatsoever in doing it with your fingers. I'm finding that the best way to do this is to get hold of the tin with your fingers and then just gently pull the uh, dough towards you. You can also turn the tin around so that you've got slightly raised edges. And if you get little holes like this just uh, fix them with your fingers, no problem whatsoever. And I'm now starting with the layering of the schiacciata or pie, whichever way you want to call it. And the very first thing to put down is the potato. They are thinly, very very thinly sliced, look literally almost cheap size, very very important that you do not do them too thick otherwise they will not cook properly. And the next ingredient is going to be my mix of meat and all of the vegetables together. And try and stay away from the edges, maybe by an inch or something like that, so that um, it gives you the opportunity to then close it later. And uh, pat it down with your hands. Mushrooms and spinach is next, which have cooled down now, so I can safely pick them up with my hand. And make sure that if you've got any water left from uh, the preparation of the spinach, that uh, you remove this, because um, you don't want this to get soggy. And again, uh, pat it down with your hands build a nice little mountain. A bit like Mountain Etna maybe. 
And my last layer is going to be cheese. I'm using uh, some Emmental, which is already pre-sliced. I've got three slices here, which is just perfect. I'm putting the cheese on the top so that as it melts, it will uh, seep through and uh, will catch all of the ingredients. Mm, delicious. Get hold of another piece of uh, baking paper, similar size to the tin you're using, or, or similar size to the previous one, and uh, add a little olive oil. And again, uh, using a brush, uh, ensure that uh, you spread it uh, evenly throughout. And uh, place the other half of the dough and uh, start uh, modeling it so that uh, you create uh, effectively a cover for your schiacciata. And again, you can use your hands quite easily because it's uh, lovely and elastic, uh, the, the dough. There, I think that should do it. So place your schiacciata back on the worktop and uh, move your other half on top. Ensure that it marries uh, the bottom and uh, first thing to do is to remove the paper, which will be very easy because you've greased it with olive oil. There. Then go in with your fingers and start sealing uh, the door, the top part of the door with the bottom part of the door. And this is why it's important that uh, you leave uh, a good inch uh, for, in, like not like this one, <laughs> a good inch uh, away from the edge for your ingredients so that uh, you've got the ability to do this. Perfect. I'm very happy that I've got a nice seal uh, throughout uh, the outside of my schiacciata. So this is nearly ready to go in the oven now. However, before we put it in the oven, I'm going to be uh, piercing it with a fork and uh, this will uh, stop uh, the dough from uh, raising up like a mountain but also it will uh, give the opportunity to the uh, schiacciata to breathe and it might also look quite pretty. Apply one last drop of olive oil and uh, with your brush uh, spread it across. This will ensure that uh, it will give you a lovely golden crust on the top. And of course you can use your hands to ensure that the oil covers the entire surface and uh, this is ready to go in the oven. I will be putting in the oven uh, for approximately one hour, 200 degrees, uh, in a conventional oven, not a fan oven today. And if you do not have the opportunity to turn your fan off because you've got a fan oven, um, you can actually lower the temperature by 20 degrees to 180, but still for approximately one hour until you get a nice golden crusty top and that's uh, the indication that it's going to be ready. So in the meantime, I'll be coming back and I'll tell you a little bit about Catania, of course. And I'm back. The schiacciata is barely cooking away and I've just finished my washing up and uh, like a good boy, I can relax and tell you calmly a little bit about Catania. I should have also mentioned that uh, the schiacciata I'm making is quite rich. The basic uh, schiacciata, which goes back to the 1800s, funnily enough, was much simpler. It was made with uh, anchovies, uh, tomatoes, potatoes, always the potatoes, and uh, also some cheese. And that was a stable diet for the man who would go to work and work the land in the morning and come back in the evening. Over the years, the recipe has evolved and eventually was something that actually was uh, predominantly only cooked for Christmas. And I remember actually as a little boy going to visit my grandparents and getting really excited about eating this schiacciata, which was uh, always a Catania speciality. Nowadays, obviously, things have changed. And although they still cook it for Christmas, uh, as it is a tradition, also it's available any time of the year, but also any time of the day. And it is actually classified as one of Catania's uh, street food. Also, you might think that Catania, because of its uh, position near the Etna, uh, has got very fertile um, soils. And to an extent, you are right, but uh, not in the extreme proximity to the volcano, because uh, the, there is a, a lot of rock and the land is very, very hard. And there is also a very high level of potassium and nothing really grows properly because the volcano is constantly active. However, as you move away from uh, the immediate proximity and you go to Greater Catania, where the ashes have had the opportunity to effectively turn into compost and uh, they've been uh, treated and rotated, the ground is really, really good and really fertile. And they grow some amazing uh, grapes and some beautiful red wine, and also their tomatoes are something astonishing. And that's why, actually, the pasta alla norma it originates mostly from Catania. I've actually made pasta alla norma and also I've made a lasagna alla norma version, which uh, I'm not going to make obviously as part of this store because I've already made them, but I'll put a, a, a click up here, but also I will put a link at the end of this video. So if you want to have a look at 
and that is because of the good and high quality of tomatoes that they thrive in, in that particular environment and also being very, very sunny. So we have established that Catania is built uh, at uh, the bottom of uh, Mountain Etna. Mountain Etna is one of the most active volcanoes in the world and that comes with its prices, although it's beautiful and uh, I'm sure that uh, often you've seen on television uh, some stunning images of the volcano's activities. Uh, it actually has created some devastated consequences in the past. Back in uh, 1669 there was a particular eruption which almost totally destroyed Catania and um, the good thing that came out from that is that uh, gave the planners the opportunity to rebuild Catania in a different way and uh, they were able to adopt uh, what was in Europe at the time the Baroque architecture and uh, they also built very large roads and lots of squares and lots of monuments and churches adopting that style and uh, that is visible throughout Catania today and uh, if you were to go and visit you will be amazed by the beauty of the Baroque architecture which is visible in a lot of the buildings. However, <laughs> I personally still think it's a little bit strange that uh, you've got this uh, volcano <laughs> constantly smoking and uh, people living uh, beneath it. But it is amazing actually what people um, get used to and that uh, they get become home for them. Interestingly, I was talking to Julie this morning about it and she said, so if they rebuilt it, why didn't they rebuild it somewhere else? And I said, most probably it's because uh, just like uh, the Vesuvius, you know, because it's home and people want to live where home is. So that's why most probably they rebuilt Catania where, where it is. So it's a beautiful city, it's uh, incredibly diverse and uh, you will find that if you were to go and visit you will uh, fall in love with uh, the architecture and the way that has been built because uh, it's modern but also it's incredibly, incredibly beautiful. So that's it about Catania for today. Hopefully I've not bored you to death, but if I have, by all means, you could skip to the next chapter. <laughs> and we are ready. It's just out of the oven and uh, I have actually put it on the worktop to cool down for a few minutes because it's piping hot. However, what I'll do, I will uh, show you how I'm going to try and remove it from the tin. Firstly, the paper is really handy because it enables me to pick it up without burning myself. And yes, you've guessed it, Julia's arrived because <laughs> food is ready. <laughs> it's tea time. It's tea time. <laughs> to remove the paper, gently lift uh, the schiacciata with uh, a spatula and just uh, take it off. We did put olive oil, so you'll find that uh, it should slide just nice and easy. And I'm ready to duck in and cut a piece. What is a particular distinctive thing about this is um, the combination of flour of course because using semolina flour and 80% uh, semolina and 20% normal flour clearly is kind of uh, unique to schiacciata. Reminds me a bit of a pizza, just sort of the general. Yeah, I suppose, maybe. <laughs> and there it comes. Wow, <laughs> looks good. Yeah. <laughs> It might be a bit of a street food uh, sort of thing, but I'm going to be using a plate. <laughs> it's too big. This one's here, by the way, Julia, potatoes. It's not all... Ah, uh, so they're potatoes. They're potatoes, yeah. Lovely. I'm going to treat it as a street food and uh, take a good bite. Mmm. I say, absolutely wonderful. It reminds me when I was a little boy and we used to get the treat at Christmas at my grandparents' house. Deliciosa, absolutely wonderful. The mixture of the ingredients, very rich, but really, really delicious. And of course, you can make a vegetarian version if you like. So try it, it's really, really nice. And uh, the combination, as I said earlier, of the two flowers is what makes it unique. The pastry actually is uh, not heavy. Initially, I thought I, was, I thought I was a little bit skeptic because of semolina, but uh, because we did let it to rest for six hours, it is nice and light and also it's very, very crispy. So absolutely beautiful. Try it. Let me know how you get on if you do. Ciao, ciao. See you later. Bye.